The film begins by depicting the conditions in heaven, where the gods held a lively party. When all the gods were celebrating in the middle of the party, a god who never wore shoes appeared and arrived late. The arrival of the barefoot immortal seemed to irritate the other gods, who thought it would only disrupt the festive atmosphere at the party. This is not the case with the Queen of Heaven, who greets the god warmly and appears at ease in the presence of the barefoot immortal, whom we will call Lee. The Queen of Heaven continued the event, knowing that all the invited guests had arrived, by reciting a poem she had written herself. A demon suddenly appeared in the middle of the event, launching an attack and disrupting it. The gods prepared to fight the demon and protect the queen right away. They soon became desperate, however, because the demon turned out to be quite powerful, so he came to heaven to prove to the queen that he deserved to be made a god, not just a demon. When the demon was caught off guard, Lee struck him in the face with his ultimate weapon, Rui, and easily dispatched the demon. <laughs> Seeing this, the queen revealed that the recent stealth attack was part of an event she had planned to test the abilities and reactions of the gods when confronted with difficult situations. The queen praised Lee for remaining calm in the face of a complicated situation until he was finally able to overcome the problem. She gave him a gift and asked the gods to return to the party and enjoy themselves. After the party in heaven ended, Lee, who was still at the venue enjoying his drink, became suspicious of something. He pulled out his weapon, Rui, just in case he was attacked unexpectedly. Rui, however, slipped out of his grasp and fell to earth as a result of his carelessness. Lee was terrified and perplexed because, according to the rules, he was not permitted to visit earth for any reason. Soon after, the gods came to Lee and physically and verbally abused him because they were jealous of him, who always had the queen's full attention. Lee, fed up with being bullied by the gods, decided to descend to earth, despite the fact that he would face severe punishment. When Lee first arrived on Earth, he saw a girl named Pian Pian hanging from a tall tree branch. He rushed to assist her after noticing she was having difficulty getting down from the tree. She thanked him for saving her and introduced herself after that. Lee claimed to be a god who had come to Earth in search of his weapon and most valuable treasure. Pian Pian offered to take Lee to the village leader to ask him directly about it, not knowing what he was looking for. When Li and Pian Pian arrived in the village, they were surprised by the appearance of the demons who wanted to attack the village in order to seize the village treasure, which was a magical object. Li did not have to remain silent and aided the residents in their fight against the demons. <laughs> By wrapping a spider web around the spider demon's body, he easily defeats it. Following that, he easily defeats a demon with a frightening appearance as well as a demon with a weapon in the form of a very strong body odor. Lee was greeted warmly by the village leader and all the village residents after successfully defeating the demons, and his success was celebrated with a party. The village leader asked the most beautiful girl in the village to accompany him to drink as an expression of gratitude for Lee's protection of the village from demon attacks. Surprisingly, the most attractive girl in the village was a 50-year-old woman. Lee, on the other hand, respected their sincerity and did not refuse the party that the villagers had planned for him. Soon after, Lee inquired of the village leader about the village treasure, which he claimed was a magical item. The villagers saw a flash of golden light in the sky descending the mountain a few months ago, according to the village leader. The situation in the village improved after that incident. As a result, the village decided to hide the treasure in a cave on top of a mountain. The village leader also informed him that many traps had been set because the demons were attempting to steal the treasure. Lee became even more convinced that the village treasure was Rui, his weapon that had fallen to earth by accident. He then informs the village leader that the treasure is his and that he intends to retrieve it. When he said that, everyone looked surprised, including the village leader, who promised to return the treasure to him. The village leader did not intend to return the treasure to Lee and instead chained him after making the god drunkenly. Lee used his divine power to break free. But his efforts were futile because he was forced to consume alcoholic beverages capable of paralyzing demons and even gods. When the village leader and the residents were about to perform the lightning summoning ritual to punish Lee, a fire appeared and burned several residents' houses. Everyone panicked and ran away to put out the fire, leaving him alone. Soon after, Pian Pian approached Lee and said she would help him find the treasure if he promised to always protect her village from demon attacks. He agreed to her request without hesitation, and she then released him. 
Soon after, Pian Pian led Li to the mountain where the treasure was hidden. The villagers who have learned that Li has fled attempt to apprehend him. The village leader then told them to let Li go to the mountain, believing he would never find the treasure due to the numerous traps set there. When Li arrived at the mountain, he used his divine power to locate a trap set by the villagers that he thought was too simple for him to avoid. However, he appeared to overestimate the villagers because he was apparently trapped in quicksand, so Pian Pian had to rush to help him. They decided to take a break by the river because the journey down the mountains was exhausting. Pian Pian questioned Li's appearance and lack of footwear, even though he claimed to be a god. Hearing that, he revealed that in the past, he was an ordinary human being who was frequently bullied because of his slightly abnormal physical condition, namely the size of his enormous feet, which exceeds the size of normal people in general. He was always alone because people thought he was strange until he met a little girl named Chao who invited him to be her friend. Chao became very ill one day while playing with Li by the river because her disease had relapsed. Her parents then blamed Li for her condition and barred him from seeing their daughter. Later, while making a toy for Chao, Li had a sudden feeling that an earthquake would soon occur in the village. He rushed to Chao's house and grabbed the little girl to save her. The villagers, however, beat Li to death because they thought he was going to kidnap her, so they became enraged and beat him to death. Meanwhile, the queen in heaven was deeply impressed by Li's kindness, as he never even hated or held a grudge against those who bullied and beat him to death. As a result, the queen elevated him to the status of god and restored his normal legs. Although his feet are now a normal size and he has become a god, Li is used to being barefoot, earning him the moniker the Barefoot Immortal. They continued their journey after Li told them about his past until they came to a cave full of traps. With Li's divine power, they easily avoided all of these traps until they arrived at a bridge that was the only way to the treasure. Li believed that crossing the bridge was a simple matter. However, as he was about to step onto the bridge, his body abruptly bounced because the village leader had installed a magical amulet to prevent demons and gods from crossing. Knowing Li couldn't cross the bridge because he was a god, Pian Pian took the initiative to remove all the amulets on the bridge so he could. Even though she slipped on the bridge's wooden steps due to their slickness, she didn't give up and tried her best to climb back onto the bridge. Li could finally pass through the bridge after she removed all of the talismans, and they could continue their journey. When Li and Pian Pian reached the summit of the mountain, they discovered an object that emitted a golden light. He was more convinced than ever that it was Rui, his ultimate weapon and most valuable treasure. When he looked closer, he discovered that the treasure was not Rui, but a massive golden egg. At the same time, demons arrived and attempted to take the village treasure. Li looked annoyed and let the demons take the village treasure, knowing that it was not what he was looking for. When Pian Pian sees this, he becomes enraged and disappointed because he allowed the demons to take the village treasure. She tried to persuade him to assist her in reclaiming the village treasure, but Li refused and then passed, leaving her alone to face the demons. The next day, the villagers apprehended Li as he approached the base of the mountain. The village chief wishes to carry on the ritual of summoning lightning to kill him. However, because Li, the immortal, is still alive despite being struck by lightning numerous times, the villagers begin to worship him as a god. The village chief and the villagers then knelt to worship Li, whom they revered as a god. However, the old woman who had previously accompanied him for drinks told him that he did not deserve to be called a god because he had sacrificed the safety of the villagers in order to obtain his own treasure. Li was reminded of Pian Pian, who decided to reclaim the village treasure from the demons and felt bad for her. Elsewhere, the demons appeared befuddled by the treasure they had obtained. Because the village treasure was a giant golden egg, they commanded the hen demon to incubate it until the egg hatched. Simultaneously, Pian Pian infiltrated the demons by posing as the cat demon. Knowing that the hen demon was incubating the giant egg for hatching, she duped the demon into giving her the egg. However, just as Pian Pian was about to flee with the egg, the other demons realized she was a human and attacked her. Li appeared and immediately saved Pian Pian from being killed by the demons. They returned to the village with the village treasure after Li defeated the demons. The villagers appeared pleased because they had been able to reclaim the village treasure that had been stolen by the demons. Soon after, they performed a ritual to hatch the giant egg. Surprisingly, when the egg finally hatched, Qing Yao, the demon defeated by Li at the heaven party, appeared. Qing Yao revealed that he was tormented by the fact that he was the only demon living in heaven because the gods always shunned and bullied him. 
Following their fight at the party, Qin Yao, who believed that all gods were the same, attempted to exact revenge on Li. However, Li used Rui to attack him at the time, causing Qin Yao to fall to earth and become a giant golden egg. The villagers who discovered the golden egg saw Qin Yao as a treasure that could protect and prosper their village, so they looked after it well. Qin Yao then dropped Li, attacked the residents, and destroyed the village. <laughs> Li attempted to stand up to face Qing Yao, but his strength had dropped significantly while on earth, and Qing Yao was a formidable opponent. When Qing Yao was about to kill Li, Pian Pian appeared out of nowhere and shielded him from the fatal attack. Li had no idea Pian Pian was willing to sacrifice herself to save his immortal self. Li saw the Rui symbol on her forehead as she died in his arms and instantly realized she was the embodiment of Rui, the treasure he had been searching for. Chao grew up to be a lovely young lady after Li died. Nonetheless, her illness was incurable, and she died as a result. Because Chao was a devout god worshipper during her lifetime, the Queen of Heaven gave her the option of being reincarnated as she desired. She asked the Queen, without thinking, to make her someone who always accompanied Li. However, because Li has become a god, the Queen forbids him from having romantic relationships with anyone. As a result, Chao evolves into Rui, Li's ultimate weapon and most valuable treasure. She then reverts to Rui in order for Li to defeat Qin Yao. A fierce battle ensued between them until Li was able to defeat the demon and render him helpless. <laughs> Soon after, the Queen of Heaven and the other gods arrive, and she plans to punish Li for descending to Earth without her permission. Li, who had accepted his fate, was then surprised by all the villagers, who kneeled and begged the Queen to forgive him for saving them from the stealth attack. Because the villagers pleaded for Li's forgiveness, the queen finally forgave him and did not punish him. When the queen was about to punish Qing Yao for all of his actions, Li begged her to forgive him and give the demon a chance to make amends by doing good to humans. The queen finally forgave Qing Yao, who looked relieved and grateful that she was willing to spare his life after hearing that. Li decides at the end of the film to stay in the village for a while to ensure that the demons do not attack the villagers. <laughs> 